today we're gonna go over all the different outfits that we wear depending on the weather and temperature when we go mountain biking. Let's go! Yep, I didn't change because this is how I started mountain biking. Just with a simple t-shirt and some yoga leggings, workout leggings, and tennis shoes. So you don't need anything fancy to start mountain biking. I didn't even actually start with this nice of a helmet. I had a really cheap helmet when I first started. So just start mountain biking however you can with whatever clothes you have and feel comfortable in for working out. Yeah! So now that I've biked a little bit more and as time has gone by, I've upgraded my gear. This is what I wear when it's warm out in the summer months. I have my nicer mountain biking helmet now. Some fingerless gloves so that I get some nice airflow. I have a workout top that is nylon, um, quick dry. And then I actually wear a biking skirt with my padded biking shorts underneath. And mainly that's because, well, one, I like skirts. But two, I haven't found any biking shorts for girls that actually fit my body. So a skirt it is. And then I have my knee pads that actually Velcro off and on. And then my actual 510 bike shoes, which have really awesome designed bottoms to work with pedals that have little, what did you call them? spikes on them so that actually gives you a lot more traction when you're riding than my old tennis shoes did. <laughs> Next for fall or spring, I keep the same skirt, padded shorts on underneath, same with my knee pads and my shoes, but only thing I change out is my top. I put on a warmer lightweight wool that has a little bit of breathability and I switch out my gloves to full fingers just to keep them warm with the cold chill in the air. All right, and then lastly, for winter, I really layer up. I do not like to be cold, and I get pretty dang cold in the winter biking, especially going downhill. So layers are important so you can adjust to your temperature level when you're climbing or when you're actually going quickly downhill with the wind rushing on you. So first, same helmet. Sometimes I have a little cap that goes underneath to cover my ears, um, sometimes not. Then I've got this neck scarf buff thing that I can put over my face if um, I'm going downhill and my face gets really cold. So that's nice. Looks like that. And also keeps my neck really warm. I've got an outer layer that is a windbreaker, which is amazing and keeps you very, very warm. Super heavy duty, warm biking gloves for the winter. Look kind of like snow gloves, so a little more waterproofy, um, but very insulated. Then a thicker wool shirt as my base layer. I put long leggings over top of my biking shorts that are padded. And then of course, layer on the knee pads again as well. Usually some warmer bike socks. And then my 510s again. All right, Ian's turn. Similar to Kat, I'm in the Old Navy Special. Um, I figured that I needed some sort of breathable outfit to work with and that was about as far as I really thought about. Um, started with that cheapo helmet, uh, basic tennis shoes, and it took me a long time to ever consider or justify upgrading um, any of this at all. I was just like, hey, I'm in athletic clothes, let's go do this thing. Um, I remember my first buddies telling me how important bike shoes were and they were going to change my world and I was like, whatever. And then I remember somebody saying, yeah, do you ride with a chamois? And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Is that like a rag? Um, so this is where it started and stayed for quite a while until this. Decided to make a few upgrades. I started with the shoes, similar one with 510 as they were like the brand for a long time. I had that sweet soul, totally changed my game. Decided to go ahead and invest in some real gloves. Um, got some summertime ones that are pretty well ventilated. I go full finger year round just for my preference. Um, ended up going for a little more legitimate biking gear, which I didn't even think could matter, but having like well tapered shirts that are a little bit longer in the back when you're hunched over, um, or shorts that are designed to work well with knee pads, were big actual game changers for comfortability uh, on the bike. I got chamois, mind blown. Chamois are actually padded shorts. 
Um, and what they are is literally a, a thin kind of spandex material that has an extra little crotch protector, if you will. But what it is designed to do is give you some cushion on your seat bones, right? You're on your saddle, you may or may not have a good seat to work with. And if you actually get into mountain biking, you get away from these big old cushy guys and into pretty thin seats. Um, and so having an extra bit of cushion, if you're gonna be out there for more than 30 minutes to an hour and you start going on rides that you're in the woods for a few hours at a time, those seat bones really start to hurt. So chamois are a game changer. Of course, as I started to get a little bit rowdier with riding, I needed some knee pads, which have been life savers. There are so many different options. Um, cats are designed to Velcro on, so she didn't have to worry about them pedaling uphill, which is super nice on those hot summer days. Mine, not so easy to put on and off, and I'm not willing to take off my shoes, so I usually keep them around my ankles on the uphill, put them on my knees for the downhill, and they have saved me from surgery. And now, got a nicer helmet that fit my head a little better, a little bit better adjustability, um, and my game started to change a whole bunch as we start into the summer weather. For that, shoulder seasons happen pretty intensely here in good old WNC. Western North Carolina. Um, we have the full range of seasons. We have a pretty dramatic change in our sunlight hours. So as we start creeping into fall or spring's happening, um, night rides become way more of a common experience. So time to gear up a little bit more. Um, I've got slightly thicker gloves, a little less ventilated. Um, I've gone for a good old classic uh, flannel style top um, it just has a single layer I do like this it's a little more technical it's got some pit vents needed uh, it's still got that drop tail um, I've decided out for pants I actually really do love shorts um, most of the time but some of those really cool nights here or if I'm trying to get a ride on the far ends of the of the hours in a day pants really do help still got the knee pads under them still going with regular shoes but that's my fall and spring setup so winter hits, and things get a little bit cooler now. I know we're in Canada or Michigan or any of those crazy cold places, so we're not gearing up for negative anything. But it definitely gets down to the teens, and we have a whole week straight of something like that. Um, I like to layer up a little bit more. So the changes that happen, I go for some gloves that have kind of the top layer as windproof so that I don't get cool. Um, my fingertips are definitely one of the things that get hit hardest. They're out there in the front, nowhere near this warm body or radiator. Um, so I gotta have some thicker gloves going there. As I move to the top, um, this time I've chosen to start with what is a wool layer and it's tight to the body. It's pretty thick. Uh, moving on down, I've gone for, similarly, I've got pants, um, but maybe my biggest shift now is gonna be into warmer shoes. So again, I've got some bike specific shoes, but these guys actually have some insulation. They're waterproof, so if there's snow or mud, or I try not to ride in freeze thaw, but if any of that element is happening, I really don't want these feet getting cold. I've also got on now some thicker wool socks to keep those toes nice and toasty. But that's not all. On top of that thick wool layer, I do like to go for one more layer, especially as wind gets cold here, as winter's happening. So I start with kind of a synthetic layer, easy pullover in between, kind of to keep a barrier between that wind and my body that is still probably gonna get a little sweat on with this wool layer. Next, some sort of windbreaker. I really do when it gets super cold, want to keep the wind from piercing any of this. Those first two layers are great for pretty cool days. Um, I would say 99% of my cold weather days, that is plenty. But for those really frigid or really windy or those extra cold days, I like to go with some sort of shell on the outside. Now, this is about as heavy duty as anything down here gets that I'm willing to go into the cold for. Um, but between a hard outer shell that's water and windproof, um, an intermediate layer to keep uh, my body warm and then a core layer that's able to deal with any of that sweat and stay warm without getting cold, the perks of wool. I'm pretty set for just about all the elements. I'm able to shed these layers. If I do get too hot, put them in the bag. I know there's so many different outfits out there. I definitely don't think it's worth it for you guys to get all bogged down and spend tons of money to look the look. If you're out there having fun and getting right on a bike, most people are super supportive. 
There's so many different attires that so many different people wear. If that's how you like to represent yourself, go for it, right? Sometimes if I want a dirt jump or downhill, I wear a different outfit that fits those things, but it's not a requirement. Plenty of people do all sorts of different things, but hopefully we gave you an idea of different outfits that may help you achieve feeling comfortable in your seasons. Let us know in the comments if you got something different or you found a really effective way that we may have left out or mentioned. Put that in the comments below. Otherwise, like this if you may have learned something. Subscribe if you want us to bring you more content from Cat Thanks.